So we have Tiffany Fang from McGill University. This is moving back to nutrition and her presentation title is called Prospecting the Chicken Microbiome for Anti-Infective Probiotics. So welcome, Tiffany. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Zhixuan Feng. Uh, you can call me Tiffany. I am a PhD candidate from animal science in McGill University. My project is prospecting chicken microbiome for anti-infective probiotics. Well, like everyone knows, because of the overuse of antibiotic, the antibiotic resistance crisis raised. Therefore, we need to reduce the use of antibiotic in both clinic and livestock. In poultry industry, governments started to prevent the use of antibiotic and the poultry community are also volunteer to reduce and eliminate the use of antibiotics. Now, most antibiotics cannot be used without veterinary prescription in poultry industry, and we are saying no to antibiotic. However, using antibiotic is one of the most important methods for medication treatment to improving farming biosecurity for a really long term. In the farm level, the vaccination program environmental control, and medication treatment are the three main keys to keep the biosecurity level high. If we cannot use antibiotics, we really need to find the alternative to fill this gap. For antibiotic alternatives, we have a lot of choice. In this option, we believe that probiotic, something you and I might use every day to improve our health, is also one of the good choice for chicken, which green, sustainable, and safe. Actually, there is already a lot of effective and useful probiotic in the market, but most of them are gram-positive bacteria, while the use of gram-negative bacteria were neglected. Some people think it might be much dangerous than you to use gram-negative bacteria than gram-positive bacteria. But there are commercialized human use probiotics is from negative bacteria, which means they should be also they should be safe to use. Also, some of these gram negative bacteria have a specific weapon that can kill the pathogen directly. And this weapon, we think it should be type 6 secretion system, which can help the bacteria to kill another one. This weapon can assemble a transmembrane and a transmembrane apparatus and deliver the toxic seed effector into a target cell and then kill it. Therefore, in our hypothesis, there should be some gram-negative bacteria from chicken samples that might have the potential to become anti-effective probiotic for chicken. In order to find our candidates, we design our experiment into three main steps. The first is establish a bacteria collection. We, want, we need to find as much as bacteria as much as bacteria we can from the chicken sample. And then we want to see if these bacteria have this unique weapon, or, and then if they have this weapon, can it really kill our target pathogen or not? Finally, we need to check their safety via whole genome sequence to screen their uh, GD. So in our first step, we try to collect the chicken feces sample from different area and collect as much as bacteria we can and select them. So with the help of different egg farmers organizations, we're able to collect chicken feces from different province remotely. By far, we collected six chicken fetal samples. These chickens are all different in age, breed, and housing system. In order to find as much as bacteria we can, we hired the cultural mix method for bacteria isolation. The key of this method is to improve as to provide them as much as culture condition you can and to your sample, and more bacteria would grow. Therefore, when our sample arrives, we try to provide them with the ideal life they want. For example, some bacteria can grow up with the air. However, some of them, they don't need or afraid of oxygen. So anaerobic chamber will be the ideal place to grow. Some other bacteria, need way more nutrients and some more time to grow. We provide them with the over nutrient, with blood, lumen fluid, and then uh, like long-term culture. Of course, some of them only grow in the specific agar with specific recipe. 
Therefore, we pre pre also prepare a lot of this colorful agar. In total, it is 76 different culture conditions to isolate bacteria in this experiment. With this culture method, from only six chicken fecal, we isolated over 3,000 bacteria strains. While also meanwhile, during the culturing, we also trying to enjoy some art just from the just from the agar. Then the isolated bacteria will be then identified with Molotov NS, identifying their protein to see their species. If we cannot identify the species with the Molotov biotyper, and then we will extract their DNA, PCR, and send them for CNN sequence. In our in our collection now, we found a lot of bacteria, gram positive, gram negative, and some of them are even gram variable. And our next step is to find if these bacteria have their specific weapon type C secretion system or not. So ideally, if we are able to find a component that, to design a primer that targets a specific component in type C secretion system, that would be excellent and very fast to screen everything. So we targeting, at first we targeting the CLPV, as our primer because it's a comparatively uh, conserved component in the type C secretion system. And however, we found it's kind of really diverse of these components in all different species. And now we designed some primer for it, but it's still under the test. So this primer is not yet the set. But whatever, if we cannot find this primer or this specific screening method, we need to test all the bacteria I just mentioned, like 3,000, and only, even only we found the gram negative bacteria, around 1,000 or more bacteria for the competition. We need to hire a high throughput method for competition assay and see if our candidates can kill the pathogen or not. So we have modified the protocol from the research of Lean. We adjust of our method based on their high throughput through competition assay. In our method, we combine two bacteria. One is our uh, commensal bacteria. One is our bacteria candidate. Another one in this case is salmonella. We combine them in different ratio and grow them on the nutrient agar for overnight 16 hours. On the next day, we recover them and resuspend them and then do the serial dilution, drop this bacteria on the selective agar. On this selective agar, the, uh, on this selective agar, the salmonella would, would become dark colony on it, while the other bacteria would turn different color or even do not grow that all. And then we would count the colony of the only the dark colony and calculate it, compare with the control, con negative control group and see which showed significant decrease of the salmonella. As a result, we defined some bacteria. Can we did the competition for 19 strings, 19 strings, and some of them can really decrease the colonization of, uh, of salmonella. So from these potential candidates, our next step would be do the whole do the whole genome sequence and see if they would be safe enough to use. So our future work, we will continue to identify more potential candidates. And also we will analyze the whole genome sequence data to make sure they are safe enough. Also, if it's possible, we will do the RNA sequence to see how it's really actually working to, what gene is really functioning to kill the pathogen. And uh, in our idea, only one bacteria might not be as ideal as we want, like kill all the salmonella. So we, in the future, we might test to combine different probiotic candidates together and see if it work better. And of course, all I mentioned about is in virtual test. It can never take place of the in vivo test. If it's possible, the future study would also do on the in vivo test. And that's all. Thank you so much. And if you want to know more our uh, information, you can check. Everything. Thank you.
Thank you for your presentation, Tiffany. I have to say that this genomics is usually out of my realm of understanding. Um, but what I did take away from your research presentation is that you've identified seven species of bacteria that can potentially kill salmonella. Um, and there were two E. coli isolates, I believe, that were listed there. Um, and then you talked about all the steps that need to happen before you've answered some of your own major questions. So how long do you anticipate a lot of that sequential re sub subsequent research taking before you get answers? Because to me, it seems like this will take quite a long time before you kind of come around to some type of product that might or some recommendation that you can give to industry in terms of, of using um, different bacteria to to kill salmonella and reduce risk for people. That's a weird yes. question. <laughs> no, I, I mean, that's actually also my question for a long time, because actually a lot of people ask like, why you don't just targeting something and isolating, it would be more, much more efficiency and then directly send it to there. But I think in my project, I'm not only on, like only finding it, I'm also like finding the possibility like, is it like, because by far chicken do not have gram negative probiotics, there must be some reason. But what if like, if we can find this new mechanism, people can have a brand new idea for what to find the probiotic instead of like just doing the traditional things. And if we have more option of probiotics, it is much like reliable for us to under, the first thing we can understand more about how probiotic work, how this uh, community like microbial community really works in our chicken and also like it, provide a new strategy. So for me, it's like providing new strategy seems more attractive. And of course, if we want to like let it work in, in vivo test, it, I would say like, if there are new project like two or three years would be enough to see if it's really working. And we already have some candidates. Yeah, well, it's good. You sound very excited about it. There are two questions in the Q&A. So the first one was, don't you think your approach of probiotics would be detrimental for commensal microbiota? Uh, I can, do you think your approach? Um, uh, yeah, the thing is like, because like the weapon I said before is only existing in 25% of the gram negative bacteria. And we are have like really limited knowledge for it. So it, as if we can find as much as we can, like much more, we have more knowledge for this like weapon. Because even like, like now it's already 10 or 20 years, but it's still like novel secretion system. So we need to find more to know more. Then. And then the second question in Q&A is, can you, just only base on the obtained whole genome sequences to identify whether your strains harboring the CLPV gene instead of using PCR. Yes, the only problem is PCR is much cheaper than a whole genome sequence. We, of course, we want to find a cheaper way to find our target bacteria. But if we have no no other way to do, we can like just use the expensive way. That's great. Thank you for your answers and your presentation, Tiffany. Um